Among the different people who make up our society, there are always those who deceive and manipulate, in other words, are dishonest. But what makes someone really dishonest, and how can we spot and protect ourselves from them? Sometimes it's difficult to say what deception is, because it happens in many ways. Some people manipulate using friendly words and charm, while others use intrigue and discreet gestures. Their tactics can be so hidden that we often don't notice until the damage has already been done. There are certain characteristics that dishonest people have in common. Generally, they are very good at gaining the trust of others. They may appear empathetic and pretend to be listening, but they are actually looking for weaknesses to exploit. Dishonest people often play the victim to gain sympathy and support, even when they are the real manipulators. But why do some people act like this? The reasons can vary. Lack of self-confidence, bad experiences, or simply the desire to have control and power over others. In some cases, there may also be psychological problems that motivate this behavior. The first step to protecting yourself from dishonesty is to recognize these patterns of behavior. It's good to learn to watch out for warning signs. Receiving too much praise, suddenly changing your behavior, or always needing the approval of others can be a sign that something isn't right. Even if our first reaction is to avoid these people or distrust them, Stoicism shows us a different way of dealing with this. Instead of acting on our emotions, Stoicism teaches us to think rationally and reflect on ourselves. We can protect ourselves from dishonest people without becoming paranoid or suspicious. In the following chapters, we will explore Stoic philosophy further and discover tools we can use to stand firm in a world full of deceit and intrigue. Number 1. The Power of Forgiveness In a world where revenge, resentment and mistrust are sometimes considered signs of strength, it may seem strange that forgiving and letting go are seen as powerful ways of protecting oneself against manipulation. However, the Stoics, with their deep wisdom and understanding of human nature, realized that these actions are not only valuable for personal well-being, but can also serve as a shield against the dark intentions of others. Forgiving begins with understanding that everyone has their own struggles, regardless of their actions. Each person, even if they seem deceitful or manipulative, acts from a place of suffering or lack of understanding. This awareness allows Stoics not to feel personally attacked, even when they are targets of manipulation. Instead of engaging in revenge and resentment, Stoics choose empathy and understanding. By letting go of the need for retaliation or the desire to be right, they free themselves from the emotional burden that often accompanies these conflicts. This detachment is not a sign of weakness, but a demonstration of inner strength and self-control. Forgiveness also directly affects the manipulator. A deceitful person often expects anger, defense, or revenge in response to their actions. When instead, they are confronted with understanding and forgiveness, this can shake up their strategy and even lead them to rethink their own actions. It's important to note that forgiveness is not the same as ignoring or accepting bad behavior. It is possible to forgive and still set limits. Forgiving means letting go of the emotional burden that often comes with the feeling of having been wronged. But it doesn't necessarily mean accepting the other person's behavior. It's nice to think of an old stoic phrase that says, the best revenge is not to be like the other person. If you know who said that, you can share it in the comments. By understanding and practicing forgiveness and detachment, we not only show strength, but also defend ourselves against the bad influences of manipulative people, keeping our calm and tranquility. Even though forgiveness and detachment bring us peace, it is also important to protect ourselves against repeated attempts at manipulation. Number two, the masks of manipulation. Manipulation is a tool that can be used in different ways. Although it is sometimes used to do good things, such as helping someone to have healthier habits, it is often used by dishonest people to control and have power over others. To protect yourself from these tactics, it's important to understand how they work. Here are some common manipulation techniques used by sneaky people. Reciprocity. This happens when someone does you a favor but expects something in return, usually something of great value. Compromise and consistency. If someone can get you to agree to something small, you're more likely to agree to bigger things later. For example, someone might ask for a small favor and then use that to ask for something bigger. Social proof. This involves making it look like lots of people are doing or believing in something so that you will follow, even if it goes against what you think. Sympathy and shame. Someone may try to win you over by being friendly or pretending to have something in common. They take advantage of the fact that people usually help those they like. Authority. People tend to obey or give more importance to authority figures. A manipulator may pretend to have false qualifications or speak in a way that sounds competent in order to fool you. Scarcity. When someone makes it seem as if something is rare or that you might miss out, this can cause you to make decisions without thinking too much.
emotional blackmail. Sometimes people try to make you feel guilty, ashamed, or threaten to withdraw love or recognition. For example, someone who is manipulative might say, if you really liked me, you'd do this for me. Gaslighting. This happens when someone tries to make you doubt what you see, remember, or know is real. Victimization. Some manipulative people play the victim in order to receive sympathy and divert attention from their manipulative actions. It's important to know that we can all be influenced by these manipulation techniques. Our brains often react to these psychological tricks. However, by being aware of and understanding these techniques, we can better prepare and protect ourselves from being controlled by manipulative people. Number three, a stoic vision for a better society. The teachings of stoicism are not only important for each person to feel good, but they also have the power to do good for society as a whole. If each person follows Stoic principles, we can build a community based on honesty, respect, and support for one another. The ideal of wisdom in society. Stoics believe that wisdom is very important. A wise society is one that talks about important things, values education, and knows how to solve complicated problems with care. If we always promote education and learning, we can create a society that is less easy to fool. Justice and the good of all. An important idea of Stoicism is that all people are part of a large group, and each person is valuable. In a Stoic society, justice means more than just not being unjust. It also means working for the good of all. If we fight for justice and equality everywhere, we help to build a community where everyone lives well together. Self-discipline and community responsibility. The Stoics talk a lot about controlling oneself and being responsible for the community. If each of us does what is right and controls ourselves, we won't need many rules and punishments. This way, we can have a society where everyone trusts and helps each other. From idea to practice, Stoics don't just want to think about good things, they also want to do good things. It's not enough just to think about being honest or fair, we have to try to be like that every day. Every little thing we do to make society better counts. The Stoics' idea of a better society isn't just an idea, it's something we can do. If each person follows the principles of the Stoics and tells others, we can all together make a stronger, better and fairer world. Number four, the Stoic way forward. The teachings of Stoicism not only help us deal with what has happened in the past and the challenges we face now, but also guide us into the future. This philosophy reminds us that life is always changing and it is our responsibility to prepare for and adapt to these changes. In a world where betrayals and manipulations can happen, it is very important to have a strong internal foundation to guide us in uncertain times. The daily practice of Stoic thinking is essential to protect us against dishonest situations. This means taking time every day to think about how we act, whether we remain true to our principles and where we might be vulnerable to manipulation. By asking these questions regularly, we develop a keen awareness of our actions and our surroundings. Proactive preparation, a key principle of Stoicism, involves anticipating possible difficulties or challenges known as premeditatio malorum. By thinking about possible manipulations or dishonest behavior and planning how to deal with them. We prepare ourselves mentally and emotionally to face future challenges. Continuous learning is another important part of the Stoic journey. The journey never ends. There is always more to learn, understand, and incorporate. By continuing to study the teachings of the great Stoic philosophers, such as Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, we can deepen our understanding and clarify our path forward. Community ties play a crucial role in Stoic life, as we have already seen. It is essential to meet regularly with people who share similar values, share experiences and learn from each other. This not only strengthens our personal growth, but also creates a network of trust and support. Look at the big picture. Stoics believe in sympathy, which means that everything in the universe is connected. Even when facing our own challenges, it's important to remember to see the whole picture. All people, even the dishonest ones, have their place in the cosmos, and everything, including difficulties, has a purpose. Moving forward into the future means always being mindful, staying true to your values and principles, and being prepared to face life's challenges. By incorporating these practices and beliefs firmly into our daily lives, we can move forward with confidence in a world that is sometimes uncertain. Now that we have the tools and techniques to protect ourselves against dishonest situations and live a fulfilling stoic life, it's time to bring our journey to a close and examine how we can use our new insights to make the world around us better. Number five, recognizing and defending against emotional manipulation. Feelings are an important part of being human, but sometimes they can leave us vulnerable, especially when they are used by people who try to manipulate us. 
In this chapter, you'll discover how Stoics can identify the strategies manipulators use to mess with emotions and how to protect yourself without losing control. Understanding emotions. Before you can perceive manipulation, you need to understand your emotions. Stoics learn not to judge emotions as good or bad, but rather as neutral signals that provide information about how they are inside. Common emotional manipulation techniques. There are various techniques that manipulators use to emotionally manipulate people, such as blaming, emotional blackmail, gaslighting, among others. By knowing and understanding these techniques, you can identify and neutralize them more quickly. The Stoic Defense. Stoics develop a kind of emotional immunity to these attempts. This is because they are always aware of their own values and beliefs, using them as a strong point to cling to when they are tempted to stray from the path. Emotional Distancing. One of the most powerful strategies used by Stoics is the ability to emotionally distance themselves from a situation. By learning to take a step back and look at a situation objectively, they can more easily identify attempts at manipulation and respond appropriately. The Power of Affirmation Stoics strengthen their self-esteem and inner confidence through regular affirmations. This protects them against the influence of praise or criticism from manipulators. Living in community and receiving support is something that Stoics value. Even though they appreciate individual strength and independence, they recognize that being in a group and having social support is valuable. By sharing experiences with like-minded people, they strengthen each other, forming a protection against possible attempts at manipulation. At the end of the chapter, there are some practical exercises to strengthen emotional defense. Recognizing and protecting yourself from emotional manipulation is not only a skill, but also an art. It requires constant attention, self-reflection, and a willingness to learn and grow continuously, because we know what happens if we can't recognize it. It takes over our minds and in the end mental problems arise, anxiety, depression, and even panic attacks. If you allow it to enter your mind, there's no escape. It will make you agonize during the day, and it won't let you sleep at night, and it can even mess with your body's physiology and shape the way you think. To do this, Stoics armor their minds, just as Epictetus did when he was a slave, and freed himself from all these evils. To do this, I made a video showing how the Stoics did it, and how you can free yourself from these bad feelings too. Click on the first comment and watch it now. Number 6. The Value of Self-Reflection In a world where every smile can conceal hidden goals, the ability to think about yourself is a very important tool for anyone who wants to protect themselves from people who act in a hidden way. It's not just a technique for understanding yourself better, but also a way of strengthening your own ideas and not letting yourself be influenced by other people's deceptive strategies. Taking time every day to consciously think about our actions, feelings and thoughts sharpens our understanding of our own inner world. This allows us to recognize our own weaknesses, fears and insecurities, which are often exploited by people who try to manipulate us. By recognizing and understanding them, we can protect ourselves from being controlled or influenced by these people. However, self-reflection is more than just being aware of our weaknesses. It is also an opportunity to understand and strengthen our own values. What are the principles that guide our lives? Which values are we unwilling to compromise, even in the face of temptation or external pressure? If we can clearly define and understand these values, they will become a strong support point to which we can cling in difficult times. But self-reflection also goes beyond the individual. It is also a way of understanding the motives and intentions of others. By reflecting on ourselves, we also learn to think about the actions and words of others and see their true intentions. In addition, self-reflection helps to distance emotions and thoughts. Instead of reacting impulsively to challenges or attacks, self-reflection allows us to pause, assess the situation objectively, and then act thoughtfully and according to our principles. To close the chapter, it's essential to point out that thinking about yourself isn't something we do just once. It's a process that happens every day, every hour, every moment. It's about keeping your mind alert at all times to avoid being fooled by obscure things and the intrigues of others. Although thinking about ourselves helps us to understand who we are and the world around us, it is also essential to know how to use this knowledge in practice. Number seven, Stoic Vigilance. In a world full of deceit and secret plans, it is very valuable to have a keen awareness and control over our emotions. For Stoics, these skills are not something we already have naturally, but something we develop with practice and careful reflection. In this chapter, we'll explore how Stoics train their minds to recognize dishonest intentions and how through mindfulness, they manage to control their emotions when dealing with these people. For Stoics, seeing clearly begins with having a true view of the world. They get used to seeing things as they really are without being distorted by desires or aversions. 
This involves being aware of their own distorted thoughts and always asking themselves whether what they are perceiving reflects reality or is just influenced by their own prejudices and desires. The importance of mindfulness. Mindfulness, which is consciously paying attention to the present moment without making judgments, is a powerful tool that Stoics use to improve their perception. Through regular meditation practices and mindfulness exercises, they learn to notice subtle details in the communication and behavior of others that might otherwise go unnoticed. Emotions as signals. Instead of letting their emotions take over, Stoics see them as useful signals. For example, if they feel a sudden sense of distrust or anger, they take this as a signal to examine more closely and reflect on whether these emotions are based on real signs of evil or whether they are unfounded. Prosoke, Stoic attention. The ancient Greek word proche refers to the constant attention that Stoics devote to their internal states. This constant self-observation allows them to realize more quickly when they are being influenced by external factors and to respond appropriately. The art of listening. A crucial aspect of vigilance is the ability to truly listen. By actively listening, focusing completely on the person speaking and trying to understand the deeper meanings and intentions behind the words, Stoics can often identify dishonest intentions. Think and analyze. Every encounter and interaction gives us a chance to think. By looking at the day and thinking about the different encounters and how we react to them, Stoics can understand patterns and become even more attentive. The chapter ends with the idea that being truly attentive doesn't mean always being suspicious or distrustful of others, but rather seeing the world clearly and being aware of how we react inside. By constantly thinking about ourselves, we can notice signs of dishonest intentions and at the same time remain calm and composed inside. Number 8. Stoic Techniques for Dealing with Intrigue Often gossip, rumors, and slander have been around for a long time, being used by people seeking power, influence, envy, or resentment. For Stoics, these challenges are opportunities to practice, grow, and deepen their principles. In this chapter, we will explore the Stoic techniques that help deal with these unpleasant aspects of human life. Firstly, it is important to distinguish between what we can control and what we cannot. Stoics understand that they don't always have control over what happens, but they always have control over how they react. Rumors can spread and slander can be hurled, but it is in our power to decide how we react. Secondly, there is the power of not reacting. Sometimes the strongest response is not to respond at all. The Stoics learned that becoming excessively defensive against slander often only attracts more attention to it. Instead of justifying themselves, they prefer to speak out through their actions and character. Thirdly, focusing on virtue is fundamental. When you focus on your own virtue and integrity, intrigues and rumors become background noise. Stoics strive to live the best life according to their principles without being swayed by external distractions. Fourthly, it's important to understand the other person's point of view. Trying to understand why someone might engage in gossip or intrigue allows you to react better to these situations. This can also lead to compassion and understanding, even towards those who seek to harm. Fifth, prepare and imagine. The Stoics use a technique called premeditatio malorum. Anticipating difficulties, by preparing for possible rumors or slander and imagining how they would react, they are better prepared when these situations actually occur. Sixthly, having the support of the community is important. As we mentioned before, the community can be a strong source of help. Sharing with others who are facing similar challenges allows you to gain new perspectives and strategies. Seventh, Think of the bigger picture. In the grand scheme of the universe, rumors and intrigues are just passing moments. The Stoics remind us to stay calm and put things in perspective. The chapter ends with the idea that despite being unpleasant, intrigues, rumors, and slander also offer an opportunity to put Stoic principles into practice. By facing these challenges with dignity, virtue, and composure, we show our own inner strength and resilience. Number nine, community and support in times when deceitful people and manipulation seem omnipresent it's very important not to feel isolated or alone. A fundamental principle of the Stoics is to understand that human beings are social beings, deeply connected to a community and dependent on relationships with others. These connections are essential to protect us from negative influences and help us live according to our values. Having a supportive community is not only good for our well-being, it's also a strategic way of defending ourselves against manipulation and deception. When we are surrounded by people who share the same values, we create an environment that values authenticity and honesty. This generates a collective vigilance where community members protect and support each other against possible threats. A strong community also acts as a mirror for our own behavior. 
By interacting with like-minded people, we can receive regular feedback, evaluate ourselves and ensure that we don't stray from the path or give in to manipulative practices. In addition, the community can share resources and knowledge to collectively protect itself against dishonest people. Experiences, stories and proven techniques can be shared in the community, making each member better prepared to recognize and resist manipulation. However, it is important to choose communities consciously, opting for those that promote genuine support and positive values. Another advantage of a supportive community is the collective power to say no. When an individual faces manipulation or betrayal, it can be difficult to resist. But when the whole community comes together and says they won't accept it, their message becomes stronger and firmer. Let's remember the words of the philosopher Seneca, who said, where there is a person, there is a chance for friendship. When we build a community with kindness, support and respect, we not only create a defense against bad things, but also a positive force that makes our world better and more joyful. Even though community and support give us the strength and protection we need, it's also important to have tools inside us that help us stay strong when things get tough. In the next chapter, we'll talk about the importance of believing in ourselves and having a good image of who we are, according to the teachings of Stoicism. To have this good image, we need to know how to be men and not let society fail us. Click on the video and watch it now.